SukoFest exclusive garb debuted on the 6th of September 2018, just one week following the release of Sakazuki and Kuzan for the upcoming Blitz Battle event. The most surprising component of this character was the fact that he debuted on the global side of One Piece Treasure Cruise first, sparking lots of excitement in the community. This SugoFest exclusive's Captain effect was reminiscent of characters such as Log Luffy and V2 Fujitora in various ways, which brought along its own scrutiny on release. However, with a somewhat disappointing Captain effect, his special would prove to be useful in content in both an offensive sense and also in terms of utility. Introducing Pirate King's arc nemesis, Garb the Fist. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. Thank you very much for checking out a yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC, and today we're checking out such a hype character on release and on announcement. This character brought in a lot of hype, as it was a global first character, which you didn't see too often. Global firsts were always extremely exciting. However, most of the time when global firsts come out, they're typically not that good, or they're never meta-defining, because they usually make the power levels of those characters a lot weaker for the global side for some reason. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Garp. Now, he came out pretty much right after the Admirals had came out with Sakazuki and Kuzan. Totally left field, we were not expecting this one. And Garp brought along some really interesting stuff, and of course this is the first Legend of Garp, and this is the only Legend of Garp that we currently have. So, we really hope that we can see another version of him later on down the road. But as for what he actually does, as we said, he's not amazing, but he has some interesting mechanics which we'll talk about. So he himself is a Psy Free Spirit powerhouse, and his captain ability would boost the attack of all characters by two times at the start of the chain, and also provide all your characters with a 1.5 health boost, so he provided some pretty good tankiness. But then he boosts the character's attack by four times if you attack in the order of good, great, and then perfect. So bringing back some Log Luffy vibes. And then he also makes Psy and Recovery slots beneficial to all characters. But then, for some reason, they decided to add this to his captain ability, where he reduces attack based on the amount of strikers, shooters, or cerebral characters you have in your crew. So essentially, you can build whatever team you want, but if you have any characters with one of these three classes, your attack multiplier is actually heavily reduced. It says attack re reduction is by 0.2 times for each of those classes on your crew. So you basically want to build a team but not have any of those three classes on it, which can be kind of difficult, especially at this point in time on release. Cerebral was one of the best classes still. Um, Strikers had a couple of good characters. Um, so the fact that you couldn't build a team with those characters was, uh, was a pretty big downside, honestly, and I don't really understand why they built him in such a way. It was really, really bizarre. But you could probably just take out that whole sentence, it would be completely fine. Now with Garp, he had a multi-stage special ability, specifically looking at stage 2 though, the most powerful version of the special, would be a 30% health cut in true damage to one enemy, true damage meaning that it just goes through enemy defensive effects. It also provides a 3 times chain lock for one turn, and also reduces special bind by 3 turns. So the, the character reduced it with their crewmate ability, getting rid of special bind is kind of nice. Though, at this point in time, you still had characters like Time Skip Nami, Rare Recruit, who could just remove 5 turns of it. But this character provided you with a health cut, which remember at this point, normal attacks only wasn't a thing. So a 30% health cut that went through everything was pretty valuable. And then also a 3 times chain lock, which works very well with when you're hitting good, great, perfect, because your chain multiplier is never going to be at that really high threshold. So a chain lock on a, on a captain ability like this does make a lot of sense, but of course this character mainly saw a lot of play as a crewmate just due to the fact that the captain ability was really not that good. Plus, uh, if we just look at the multi-stage special, even after limit break, 8 turn cooldown for a 3x chain lock, 
it, even that by itself was really good and was even just used just for the stage one special ability so you know the character he, he was okay on release but definitely not anything meta defining but we're going to be using him today and hopefully we can uh, actually use him to actually clear some content and of course he did receive the super evolution uh, somewhat recently it was quite a while back now now that we think about it but you can see that they actually did take away the stupid condition where if you bring certain classes it actually reduces your attack multiplier so of course it's a lot better now but it's still not a character that really sees a lot of play as a captain and as for the two pieces of content we're going to be playing today we've got Colosseum Shiryu and Colosseum Cat Viper it's getting to a point now where they're releasing more legends of what content is actually coming out with so there's going to be obviously a lot of content that we can't play because it's not in the recollection archive which is a bit of a shame of course it would be nice to actually go back and play in the events that some of these characters debuted for like some of the blitz battles and stuff just to show you guys how they performed in that kind of content but Anyways, let's go ahead and spin that wheel and let's see what we go ahead and land on today. Cat Viper is going to be the more difficult one, so that would be more fun to play. But let's see what we go ahead and get. We do get Cat Viper, that's awesome. Alright, let's go ahead and build a team with Legend Garp as the captain to take on the Colosseum Cat Viper. Let's go ahead and do it. So we're back in game with my man Monkey D. Garp, Vice Admiral at Navy HQ, and Luffy's grandfather. In order to have Luffy grow up strong, he raised him with a strictness that could kill. This strict upbringing is what gave Luffy his unfathomable ability to survive in every situation. So Monkey D. Garp is ready to go, and of course I didn't actually go ahead and level up a duplicate, I just devolved my one, but it's okay, no limit break expansions. Uh, he does have, unfortunately, uh, additional cotton candy, but it's not not that big of a deal he is rainbow though so he has the critical hit and the barry penetration which is good and this is the team composition that we have we've got a couple of pretty interesting choices and remember that we're not allowed to bring characters that are striker shooter or cerebral as that will severely underpin the amount of damage that we can do now for the ship that we have we've got the dreadnought saber uh, one of the mini bosses that we may come across has resilience and if we have a ship that can just do end of turn damage it will make things a lot easier for us i don't think damage is going to be a problem considering when you use garp special it does provide that 30 percent health cut through everything so i think that's going to hold held us in good stead for you know giving us that additional bit of damage so we'll see how it performs if we need to change it up we'll go ahead and change it up but uh let's go ahead and take on the Colosseum versus Cat Viper. So once again, thank you very much to the 12.1 update for allowing us to use the uh, our own friend captains, which is fantastic. So here we go into the final round versus Cat Viper. Hopefully we can get the job done. Let's go ahead and get it started. And here we go, final round versus Cat Viper, battle 01. So another thing as well, so we've got battle one here. We see the cannoneers at the back. Those guys, if they fall below 50%, we get inflicted with blindness. We don't want that to happen. But because we have the ship that does end of turn damage, we do have to be very, very cautious in terms of how we're doing that. All right, we'll go ahead and kill one. And how much damage is this doing to these guys? Um, I think we can get away with one more turn. So I think we'll go ahead, kill this guy this turn. We'll kill the secondary cannoneer in the following turn just above 50 percent and then we'll go ahead and kill this one okay this is looking good but this is you know this is kind of a cool video because i feel like garp didn't get some love that he kind of deserved he didn't really get a lot of representation so i think this is going to be a cool video just to show him off you know how he was on release um, a bit of a weird character of course with some of those conditions that we had to deal with you know not uh not building a character or not building a team with you know striker shooters and cerebrals at times can be a little bit difficult you know um but either way uh the fact that you can't use them at all it, it, it basically reminds me a lot of like Katakuri, like V1 Katakuri, where he only boosts, you know, the, the original Katakuri would only boost, you know, each of those five classes, and you needed to have both of them to get the big boost. This is kind of like a pseudo version of that in a way. So uh, here we are with Battle 2. Uh, we want to do a little bit more stall, probably not too much more stall, so we'll see how we go. Um, one thing that I'm kind of concerned about is that one of the variations on Battle 3, one of the mini bosses that we can get, is that he does a significant health cut to us, which is going to make stalling on Battle 4 a little bit more annoying, because we do have to do a little bit of stall on that battle because of the blindness, and he has like a perfect barrier, so it's going to be kind of difficult to pierce that. So let's see what kind of mini boss we'll actually get. It's gonna be Carrot. Okay, this one is probably the easiest one. So, Carrot, I believe, um, gives us Paralysis, right? So, a little bit of a health cut and some Paralysis, which is not too bad. Um, we've got this Dinosaur that's gonna attack us. Also, Carrot will attack us this turn, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. 
Um, we'll just go ahead and pass the turn here. Keep a little bit of matching slots. So Kara and the Dinosaur are going to hit us. Okay, not too much damage. Not too much. And then we can just do our normal attacks. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let's do it. Oop. Good. Great. Perfect. Okay, unfortunately we didn't kill Carrot. Hopefully she doesn't do anything on this turn. Uh-oh, what's she doing? Is that more paralysis? Okay, only one more turn of paralysis. That's okay. I think we'll just pass the turn here. Get rid of some of these slots. And then we'll kill her in the following turn. And luckily she's not doing too much damage to us, which is good. Yep, nothing here. So, good, great, perfect. You've got to remember that order. Here we go. Good. Great. Perfect. There we go. Fantastic. All right. Battle 3 is dealt with. Now we can go on to Battle 4, which has Kanjuro. So, as we said, he does have that really annoying perfect barrier. And we need to hit good, great, perfect to have the high multiplier. But we are blinded for a couple of turns. Luckily, we have characters that have slot bind on the left-hand side of our crew. So that we don't have to deal with the slot bind. But... Hmm. Eventually, when we do our burst turn, we're going to use Doflamingo as well. So, ideally, we use uh, Garp and Dofi on the burst turn after two turns have passed. So, when we use Dofi, we can switch some of our slots around so that we get matching slots on some of our characters. So, I guess we will have to get matching slots on our captain. Because we can switch the one on Dofi and Luffy, and then we can switch the one on Luffy and Ace. That should work okay. Alright, and then we'll go ahead and pass one more turn. So the blindness is now removed. And we have... We're going to have a full board of matching slots, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and use Garp Special Ability, which does the 30% health cut that goes through all defensive effects. Gives the 30% um, the health cut, as well as the Chain Lock, which is awesome. And if you had Special Bind, he would remove three turns of Special Bind. The Fist of Love from Old Mate Garp. There it is. And the, the uh, really cool chain lock. And then we can use Doflamingo, which is going to provide us with the orb change and the two times orb boosting effect. And we have a full board of slots. And we just end on ace. And it should be more than enough damage. Remember, we, we are using the Dreadnought Saber ship, which actually doesn't have an attack boost. So we do lose a bit of damage there. But, you know, having to deal with resilience on battle three, it is kind of a thing you have to deal with. So, good, great, perfect. And then we hit perfects all the way. All right, let's get it. All right, didn't even have to hit with Ace. That was a lot of damage. And then we've reached the final boss stage. Hopefully, we have enough damage versus Cat Viper. Hopefully, it is enough. Now, the thing about Cat Viper is that he actually does revive. So, you do need two different like burst turns. And also, another thing about it is that you can only use two specials per turn. So, that obviously is a little bit of a downer. So, we'll go ahead and use Garp once again, which provides the 30% health cut. Such a good special ability in a time like this where normal attacks only basically didn't exist. So, um, that's pretty awesome. And that's going to give us the chain lock, the health cut, which is basically like an extra bit of damage, which is fantastic. And then we can use Ace's special ability. So, Ace is a really nice addition to the team because he'll essentially give a, a, an, an attack boost for our entire team, except for Doflamingo. But that doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. Just as long as we have, you know, the full board of slots and the attack boost, which is great. And then we hit good, great, perfect and end on Luffy. And hopefully it's enough damage. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh-oh. Yes, okay. We screwed up on the very first tap. So I was a little concerned, but luckily with the chain lock, the attack boost... It was just enough damage to get us the dub. Okay, so he revives. We have recovery bind. We got really good slots, but unfortunately, we do have to use Luffy to um, get the color affinity boost. And then we're going to use Judge, which provides us with an orb boosting effect. So the 1.75 color affinity gives himself a matching slot. And we got really good slots, actually, so we can't really complain about that at all. Judge gives us a, a two times orb boosting effect. So we have a two times orb boost and a 1.75 color affinity. And so long as we hit good, great, perfect, we, we should just easily win here. So let's finish it up. And there it is. And there it is. Easy as that. There we go. Just Cat Viper was down. It was, it was that easy. So Legend Garp, despite not being one of the best legends in the game, still holding his own against a somewhat difficult Colosseum at the time. But you know, when you get 
to these power levels of these special abilities providing you with so many effects uh, content like this does become a lot easier so that's going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching and even though this week was a little bit less hype in terms of the character that we covered next week we cover one of my personal favorite sugo fest exclusives in the game's history and that character is version 1 katakuri one of the most uniquely designed characters in the game with his delay mechanics i'm really excited to jump into next week's video so i really hope you guys did enjoy this episode though covering legend garp if you guys enjoyed it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video